That's I I um I gave up wearing watches when I was a kid. Like every year, I would ask for like a Mickey Mouse watch for Christmas, and then <laughs> every every January or February, I would have completely destroyed it. Um, <laughs> because apparently, when I walk, I walk around like dur, 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 and just <laughs> hit everything with my wrists. I was going to talk be... about that. You should probably stop. <laughs> Nobody told me. <laughs> they would be just all scuffed up and broken and messed up, and so I, I stopped wearing a watch for for a long time because of that. Um, well, I mean, no, like you were also a child. Like children destroy things. It's a well known fact of life. No, because I tried it again. Like like on my mission, you need to watch, and I would go through a watch like every few months. I just buy. I got to where I just buy the like the cheapest one because it was gonna break no matter what. <laughs> you know what that means. Means you've never grown up. I'm like Peter Pan of yeah. wrists. I already know I'm good with in the infinite childhood. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Okay. There's, there's the title of our podcast right there. We're not going to talk about childhood at all. We should just call it that. There's not, nothing. <laughs> none of the, I mean, maybe some of this is childhood. Well. <laughs> Welcome to Three Guys, Three Questions, where three guys test the limits of propriety through the questions we ask. Today is September 27th, 2014. This is episode five of season two. I'm Aaron L.M. Goodwin, and I'm joined, as always, by Andrew Savage. Hello, everyone. Everyone says hello back. I just heard him. Um, and, and Adam, Dad Snare Moan Anderson. Hey, what does that one even mean? Um, that's an anagram of your name. All right then. That's what I do in my spare time. <laughs> yeah, I don't say. How long does that take? <laughs> Just make anagrams. It didn't how take many, any. T- how many anagrams of how many people do you have? <laughs> worry about it. Do you just have a notebook filled with anagrams of people's names? Like, yeah. everyone you've ever met, like, you created an anagram for them? Well, and, like, okay. think of them as that anagram when you're thinking about them? From what you like, know... Have you ever accidentally called somebody their anagram instead of their name? <laughs> From what you know about me, first of all, I can understand why you would think I would have a collection of these, but second of all, I don't understand why you think it would be in a folder. No, just a notebook. <laughs> not even no, not even a notebook. It's obviously in a plain text file. <laughs> this Don't untitled worry. one. <laughs> <laughs> well, they all have titles, and I'm very specific about the way they're titled. Anyhow, it's, it's an am- it's an anagram of untitled one. <laughs> <laughs> untitled one. <laughs> All right. This week we are sponsored by Dixon Ticonderoga Number Two Pencils, um, Bendiness, and Muscle Milk. Don't ask uh, how we milk the muscles. Just enjoy the sinewy taste. That's there. There. I, I thought I'd do a slogan for that one. <laughs> I've never heard of something less appetizing than sinewy taste. <laughs> I don't understand, like, how they called it muscle milk, and no one has has seemed to, like, come to the conclusion that I did the first time I saw it. Like, oh, it's like muscle juice? Like, milks from muscles? Well, it's milk think... for muscles, not milk from muscles. It doesn't make sense. I really don't feel like their clientele is one of the things about word usage. <laughs> There's muscle. That's for me. It's milk means drink. Got it. <laughs> All it right. Strong. I want strong. Milk means drink. I like drink. <laughs> <laughs> Just call everything something milk. Gatorade milk. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> this is pretty much Gatorade milk right here. The white like, Gatorade. Things are just divided into milk and not milk. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you've got like apple juice milk, but then you've also got like motor oil, not milk. Or, you... or apple not milk. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> to live in such a binary world. <laughs> oh, it was, those were simpler oh, no. times. Follow up and feedback. Um, the only follow up I had was um, why well, two? Because last week when I said follow up, I didn't say follow up. I said follow back. I want to apologize for that. 
I didn't notice. I was probably distracted by the coins on my desk. <laughs> Freaking drove me nuts when you hear yourself say something stupid like eight times when you're editing something. It's terrible. Also, um, that's why I never listen to the podcast. <laughs> I don't want to hear myself say things stupid that are stupid. <laughs> So you don't even know what's in there. Like, I could put anything I want in there. Yeah. Hmm. Don't give him that power. I just, I didn't want to hear myself talk and try to justify my Terminator comment last week. <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst when you, you, like, do you, after you say something and immediately regret it, like, you immediately... Oh, that's half of everything I say. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh, it's permanent. It's on the internet, and ev- and people will watch it. And oh, it's the worst. Now that that's in our head, um, let's talk about Dolly Parton. Did you guys see that video? I did, yeah. and it disturbed me, kind of. <laughs> so, <laughs> Andrew, why don't you explain what that video is? It's Dolly Parton playing the saxophone of the Benny Hill theme. <laughs> That's all I can say. She she doesn't do a bad job playing the song. <laughs> She's really good. I didn't know she played the saxophone. I'll bet there's a lot we don't know about Dolly Parton. I feel like I'm okay with that. <laughs> She's secretly a robot. <laughs> oh, I can see Dolly Parton being like Taylor Swift's secret mother. Oh, that needs to be like a. Like a reality show, I would watch. Oh, it could be called. I feel like I've just like exploded Aaron's mind. It could... <laughs> he's, he's going through all of the possible oh, permutations of what could happen if this I is true. I am so, he's so excited. Oh. Do a sitcom. Do a sitcom. <laughs> I would oh, watch man. it. It could be called Swift Pardon. <laughs> and they're lawyers. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, and there are lawyers in England because wigs. <laughs> what? <laughs> lawyers in England wear those wigs, man. Just picture them in the wigs, but they've got like Dolly Parton's got like a real strong Southern accent. <laughs> now so, y'all better quit my cot, you hear? <laughs> And then all of a sudden she, like, when, when all's going really bad in the trial, it's really this dramatic shot, and you see her looking at her people, and then she slowly turns towards the judge and jury, and she's got a saxophone. <laughs> and she's like... <laughs> and it's perfect, because it's England, and they're like, Benny Hill! And yes. she's like, I can play it backwards, too, and turns around and shakes her booty. <laughs> Which is what happened in the video, which is which was the disturbing part <laughs> that I referred to earlier. Oh, if you're into that was, that really, was really yeah. sexual, like eighty-year-old women, I don't know how old she is, but something like that. She's too this, old. This is the video for you. <laughs> like, if she had just been playing the saxophone, like that would have been fine. I would have been totally okay with that. I just know that she was wearing like an overhead jumpsuit. And that was frightening. <laughs> the CW needs to fast track Spiff Pardon. <laughs> Swift to get that Pardon. out for the, for the, for the spring season. Someone, <laughs> someone please Photoshop that for us. Please. <laughs> I don't know who's listening out there. Please Photoshop this. <laughs> I, could, I could see Fox picking the pilot up and then canceling it after like three episodes. <laughs> <laughs> what if Joss Whedon wrote it? Uh, Strong female characters is kind of his thing. Anyway. (laughs) All right, let's get into our questions. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Question. Oh, yeah, that's what we do here. We're not just a Dolly Parton Taylor Switch fan podcast. We actually do other things. Yeah, this feels like the second time we've talked about Taylor Swift. I think it's... I blame Aaron. It's (laughs) It's the third... Because I also talked about the song keeping me awake. Was that on the podcast or off the podcast? I don't remember. It's hard to remember. remember We talk, for those of you who don't know, we talk for like four hours. And then the podcast is like 50 minutes. 
Yeah. So what you're getting is the best 50 minutes out of the four hours. <laughs> We're not really sad. this entertaining. My question first. Okay. Aaron's question. My question. Okay. Um, this question comes via Leonard Fish. I don't know if it's okay to say his name um, on there. I didn't think about that, but I'm pretty no, sure he doesn't care. Can't take that. Like, and, uh, there's no I mean, for what Major I Hobbit. Can't put the tube. Can't put the, uh, can't put the, the the toothpaste back into the tube. Yeah, there we go. Sweep it I out got it. In, when you edit it. I'll just uh, yeah. Just then it sounds like it's. He's like, and then it sounds like we're insulting him. This question comes from. Beep, like, oh man, what did we say? <laughs> from just, uh, put, just put a bit of the sax from Dolly Parton. <laughs> <laughs> okay um his question is if there were no restriction on you uh money effort political issues anything like that what would you change and why so no restrictions on you what would you change and why so this is, is this personally or like in the world this is uh, interpret that however you would like. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna answer that question with more questions. Like, of course you how are. long how long did this does this period of no restrictions last? Like, is it forever, or is it just like do I have like unlimited money to do one thing with, and then I'm back to just being me? Let's limit it to one thing because I think that's more interesting. You know what I mean? And I don't I don't want to hear your entire life plan. Well, I feel like if we just limited it to, like, one thing, like, how could I not choose world peace? Okay, fine. You can do more. <laughs> so like, after I solve all of the world's, question, like, problems, like world peace and hunger, <laughs> water, getting water to people, um... I feel like that's that's when something interesting can happen. Like that's when that's when I can really use my lack of restrictions to do something really cool. Mm. And I have decided that I will make a documentary about Juggalos. <laughs> that's not gonna have the same freaking answer. <laughs> so, so in this fantasy world where peace is all over the entire world, Juggalos still exist. Yeah, what? <laughs> It'll probably be a documentary about the demise of Juggalos, like the last of the. Ju it'll be it'll be like the last oh. of the Mohicans, but it'll be the last of the Juggalos. It's like Mark of the Penguins, but with Juggalos. Can yeah. we Photoshop that? The last of the Juggalos. <laughs> <laughs> the March of the Juggalos. There's all sorts of things it could be. <laughs> I don't know, Instead man. Of, it could be like I am Juggalo, and like just paint Will Smith's face with clown makeup. <laughs> I think you can do any, that with any movie. Just paint every, any poster juggalo paint on each actor's face. I feel like Ferris no book, that's the of second the thing. That. That's the second thing I'm requesting that our listeners, watchers, whatever, um, our fans Photoshop is I want them to start putting juggalo makeup on every movie poster they can think of that would be good. I want juggaloized people. Yeah, I know one I want, of you 30 oh, people can do this. <laughs> I want one that's a notebook. Juggaloed. That's what it's called, <laughs> juggaloed. <laughs> I'd like juggalized. Juggaloized. Oh, um, Andrew, what's your answer to this? So, I think this is more personally. Like, if I had nothing restricts, I could just change something. I would focus all my time and energy in being a woods craftsman. Ooh. Ooh. A wood. Like being able to carve wood and elegant pieces of furniture and things. I feel like that's something that I've always wanted to do, but I've, one, lived in the desert. <laughs> Two, had to have a job or school. And three, it's not a very uh, lucrative field to get into. But that's what I would want to do. So do you want to do, like, Hand carving, or do you want to use a lot of like saws and stuff, like power tools? I would like. I want to do a lot of hands, like chisels and wooden mallets, and like the planes. Yeah, that's a very therapeutic thing to do. My stepdad does that a lot, and he he lets me do it with him sometimes. It's just it's really relaxing because you're just like. Shoo. 
Plus, yeah, you could be in an office that just, like, or a, a whatever, like a studio that just smells like wood. Oh, that'd be Oh, hard. yeah. You wouldn't have to get, like, sandalwood, like, cologne. You just smell that way all the time. <laughs> Do they sell sandalwood cologne? Is that a thing? Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. yeah. It smells amazing. Sandalwood's where it's at. I didn't know that was a thing. I don't know. This question was really hard for me because I feel like most of my restrictions are just me. <laughs> that's, so like, a, that's a I don't, first world problem I don't have like a, like there are some financial like restrictions that I'm under but I feel like the thing that's getting in the way of me doing what I want to do most of the time is just the fact that I sit around all day and don't do it <laughs> not me man <laughs> I don't believe you <laughs> um all right, so we got a Juggalo documentary and then becoming a, a woodworker. Mm-hmm. Andrew, did you ever watch this little old show on PBS called New Yankee Workshop? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes! Did anybody yes! ever... Did, has anybody not watched that show? That show's amazing. Wait, you never... You, we What? <laughs> <laughs> no, I have I have watched it. I'm saying like it's are there awesome. people who exist in so, the world who don't watch it? There that? are a lot of people I've mentioned that I've tried to make like New Yankee workshop jokes all the time and no one gets it. Cause Maybe, not because not because they're bad jokes, not because they're bad jokes, Adam. Because <laughs> Yankee that's, what, that's what I was gonna suggest. Like maybe they do get it and they just don't laugh. No, no they, when when I was younger, I would watch it all the time, like three or four. And mm-hmm. Bob Vila is the host, and my young mind would call him Bob Vilala. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Vilala. <laughs> and so I've, so yeah, it's kind of ingrained in my mind. I just mentioned flannel shirts and sawdust everywhere. Dude, New Yankee Workshop was the best. I love that show, and and the one, well, the one that Bob Vila. This was, old house. Was, was this oh, old, house. old house? I think he was in New Yankee Workshop in the beginning he did or both, something. I think. Yeah, because no, two guys. I thought New Yankee Workshop was the guy. His name's like Norm something. Yeah, but he's not the guy that's on Tool Time. It, <laughs> it took me way too long to realize. <laughs> you thought That'd it was Tim Andy Allen? Crossover. No, no, no. Tim Allen, Al Borland. <laughs> oh, Al Borland. <laughs> you know his name? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know the actor's name. New Yankee Workshop is a word-working program produced by WGBH in Boston. We all know what it is, Aaron. But Keep looking it up. His name is Norm Abram. Norm Abram. Wow, oh, you beautiful beard. Yeah, it took me forever to realize that Norm <laughs> Abram and Al Borland are not the same person. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think, yeah, that makes sense. Dude, this is like the happiest day of my life. Like, this is how I know there's... That our friendship is real. <laughs> my, answer, my answer to this question. <laughs> I would um I would You're buy not allowed t- to say make the Taylor Swift documentary because I already <laughs> stole that joke. So. I would I would buy Twitter is what I would do. What um, would you do with it? What I would do with Twitter is I would change it to a non profit um so that it doesn't have to worry about turning a profit um, and turn it into this sort of thing for humanity. So, I mean, obviously you have to pay the bills. So I would endow it with enough money so that with investments, it would just keep providing the money that it needs to, to be sustainable. And I would uh, make it, you know, just pretty much simple, no screwing with it, no, like, having people's favorites show up or having ads and crap like that. I would, none of that, so that we would have Twitter into perpetuity, in perpetuity, (coughs) into the future, and it, it, uh, yeah, and the only requirement I would make to do this noble thing would be that everyone who wants to be a Twitter user has to get a license. And the only thing they have to do to pass the license... A license to use Twitter? Yes. The only thing now... I know that sounds crazy, but hear me out. Well, I mean, that's not the craziest thing that you've said so far. 
<laughs> the license requires them. The only requirement is that they have to pass a test whereby they demonstrate an understanding of hashtags. <laughs> they, they understand that they are not freaking parenthetical statements. You can't do a whole sentence hashtag for everything you want to say that, that they don't do that. And then I will let them have it for free forever. Um, <laughs> you do realize that now that you said this, most of my tweets will contain parenthetical hashtags. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's like, not I, I, I really think it's right? Really interesting that like you weren't interested in like furthering democracy or increasing the capability of humanity to to participate in free speech. The real reason you wanted to buy Twitter and make it last forever is so that people don't use hashtags the way that you don't like them to use hashtags. Yeah, that's pretty much <laughs> what my plan was. <laughs> All the other stuff will happen too. Natural byproduct trickle down <laughs> to an audience. But like, is it really free speech if you're restricting access to it? Well, here's the thing about hashtags: is because one person's like, "I'm just gonna be funny. I'm gonna hashtag everything." I'm like, "Oh, this is how it works." Every time I finish a tweet and it's only like a hundred words, I'm like, "I have fifty characters worth of hashtag. I need to fill this up with." <sighs> No. My favorite, my favorite is the hashtag hashtag. <laughs> so you can do and, that. See, see. And my favorite, my favorite, I mean least favorite, because I thought it was hilarious when I did it, because I thought I was the first one. And, and then you, I realized that I wasn't, and then I started seeing it everywhere, and I realized that I wasn't funny. And now every time I see it, I'm reminded of how not funny I am. <laughs> I don't think the the ironic hashtags are a problem. I think that's okay. But people who seriously use it where they could just put parentheses around a statement drive me up the wall. I feel like as our as our resident editor of the three guys three questions team, I for one welcome our new punctuation. <sighs> Next question. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> now that I've made Aaron angry. <laughs> Freaking. The, I'm, I try not to be a Nazi about a lot of things, but hashtags I want to be a Nazi about. Okay. Maybe you should consider never being a Nazi at all. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that works out pretty well for most people. Adam, it's your turn. My question is, have you ever been in a fight and what's the story? Hmm. If the answer is no from both of you, then this is a terrible question. <laughs> so no, I'm really excited because obviously you've been in a fight. Really you in a fight. <laughs> Andrew, you're up. You're up to bat. So oh, okay. Um, I've never really been in a fight. Uh, I did. I did have a confrontation when I was in fourth grade. Yeah, like a so, verbal confrontation, or no, it got physical, but. I don't think you could describe Was it as it a just fight. like hand slaps. No. <laughs> so this this guy was like upset because I guess he thought I did something, which is usually how all arguments in elementary school started. But so he's like terrorizing me and my brother. I mean, I'm like, hey, don't worry about it. We're just gonna be chill. And he's like, he's like punching us, and I'm like, oh, whatever. And so he was like a year younger than me. I'm like, I'm tired of this. And he punched me, and I just decked him, and he fell. And I walked away. Yeah. And that was it. And I was like a five-year-old, or not five-year-old, but fifth grade. And I felt so bad. <laughs> I felt so guilty. I'm like, he might be dead. I just walked away. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> check his pulse. <laughs> I, I could have killed him. I'm a murderer. So I told my parents. I'm like, they're like, whatever. I'm like, oh, thanks. <laughs> it's not <laughs> such a big deal. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, so that's, that's my... I, I punched somebody and then they collapsed and um, then I just walked away. I'm not I'm not culpable in their death, right? Well, here's my reason why. It wasn't like I'm like trying to be BA or anything like that. It's like because I was going home and I wanted to watch the Animaniacs and I had to get home. I was walking <laughs> home from school, so I mean, my brother, I'm like, dude, I gotta go. You're like gotta wacko, go. wacko, and dot don't wait for nobody, fool. Poof. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That was my thought process. It was like, yeah. <laughs> You're like, I have to end this fight as quickly as possible because I need to watch Animaniacs. <laughs> I don't think if there's a worse reason to punch someone. 
I have never I've been in a fight either. Um, <sighs> <laughs> here's the th here's the thing. Like growing up, I was always taller than all of the other kids. Like like I was. I was like this height by the time I was like in middle school and then I just didn't grow anymore. So like then everyone passed me up. So I was always like taller and bigger too. Um, so I never really had anybody give me trouble or if they did, it ended really quickly. So the one thing I can think of is um, there was this kid in soccer who was really mad at me because I was trying to get our team to be named um, – I don't even remember what the team name I was trying to to make it be, but it was one of those things like where if you know me, this makes total sense. But like, all of the kids wanted it to be this one name, and I was like, "That is stupid. We're not the right color for that name." <laughs> it wasn't the name of the band from Full House. That's what it was. <laughs> I don't even remember what the name was. I just remember that my name went along with the color and the fact that we were in the desert. You know what I mean? Like I was like, "This needs to be." Like pertinent to our locale. You guys were going to be like the Desert Browns. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Can we, let's just be the Dust Devils, guys. And they're like, no, we're going to be the Big Monsters. And I'm like, that's a dumb name. Um, we're going to be the Big Purple Monsters. Like we're we're, we're green. <laughs> we're <just> green. <laughs> it was it was something like that where I was like, and then I just kept like negotiating with with like so while we were like waiting in line during a drill like with all the kids and getting them on my side <laughs> like a politician <laughs> yeah. and slowly like turning everything so that by by the time the coach was like all right did you guys think about a team name and all it was basically like all the kids like the first kid was like yeah we want to be this thing and then he looked for like all the other kids who were like yeah 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 and they just didn't say anything and then they looked at me and I was like, actually, we want to be this. And, and, and then I looked at the kids and they didn't say, they were like afraid, like they had to choose between us. <laughs> and so the kid got like, the coach was like, and you're oh, this tall, monstrous man. I'm not a monstrous. <laughs> and so, like some sort of mega person. <laughs> and so the coach w was like, probably smart. He was like, well, I'll think about it. Cause he didn't want to like cause this huge thing. And then we went back to doing a couple more drills and, and the kid like just looked at me from like across the field and he was just like started running at me. Like he was going to try and get in a fight with me. He just like ah, started running at me. And the thing is I was in karate. So I, I was like, I knew what I was going to do. It wasn't like, I wasn't really worried about it. I was like running at me is probably the stupidest way to start a fight with somebody. <laughs> and so he just keeps running and I just as soon and he was like you could tell he was like full on into it and slowly as he got closer he was like maybe this isn't a good idea maybe uh, he was far enough away from you that his run like allowed him time to think about what he was doing <laughs> and he's like he's like why isn't he moving why isn't he running at me that's weird and by the time he got to me I was just like <laughs> and flipped him over and so <laughs> I flipped him behind me and he rolled on the ground and everyone saw it. And he just like got up feeling awkward about like just getting <laughs> flipped. <laughs> and then like brushed the dirt off. And the coach was like, what, who, what, what's going on? And that was it. So that is the he only. Like, well, I guess I'll leave forever now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened to that kid. <laughs> Disappeared that day. <laughs> that's, that's like a not really a fight. But I, so I flipped a kid. I answer to this question. And so I Well that's not what I said. <laughs> I was probably in fourth or fifth grade, so I was in elementary school and I was riding the bus. And it was probably right at the beginning of the school year. Or yeah, it was probably right at the beginning of the school year. And there was this kid on the bus who for some reason really liked like really hated the fact that my brand new jeans that I was really excited about getting were from Old Navy. <laughs> and he was like, like Old, Navy, oh, Old Navy. And like, he just like, for weeks, this would just go on. Like every time he saw me, he'd be like, hey, how's it going, Old Navy? 
What? Where were they supposed to be from? I don't know. Like, like, like I like I had nothing wrong. Like I had nothing against Old Navy. Like nobody I knew had nothing anything against Old Navy. Like it was an insult that didn't make any sense, and that made it all the much like that much worse. <laughs> like, like I don't understand why you're saying this. <laughs> and so, one day, like he actually like came into the seat I was sitting in. He was like, Old Navy, Old Navy. And he was like poking me. And I was... He liked you. <laughs> That's totally <laughs> it, dude. He had a thing <laughs> I don't know what he was up to. And I was, I was probably taller than most kids also when I was in fourth or fifth grade. I'm a little bit larger. And so I just stood up and like he immediately like retreated like across the bus aisle like into another seat and he was like backpedaling away from me and I was like stop calling me old navy and I just popped him right in the mouth. <laughs> and like I heard his I like I heard his jaw crack just like, oh. like you know when your jaw pops a little bit yeah and like I remember my hand kind of hurt and then I just sat down and was like okay I'm ready to go home now. <laughs> And this is like the end of the fight. Like he never talked to me again. Like I didn't feel, but ba- I don't. I didn't feel bad about it. I don't feel bad about it to this day. <laughs> I did nothing. I I contend that I did nothing wrong. He, he was an annoying little child, you and mean, he deserved to be popped in the mouth. You mean you somehow survived that bullying? I did. I was I was kind of a little bully in in oh. elementary school. Like not for very long. It was for like one year, like during third grade, and I was like pushing people around and stuff. And then one day I was just sitting on the bus because I was out in the country. So there were like 45 minute bus rides. It gave me a lot of time to think. And I was just sitting down. I was sitting there and I realized I'm a bad person. (laughs) (laughs) That's really really good because some people it takes like half a lifetime to have that (laughs) mental dialogue. It took me like three months in sixth grade or third grade. Wow. <laughs> um Yeah, I still don't I still don't feel bad about what I've done to that man. Like <laughs> what if you talk to him? What would you say if you met yeah, him? Like, I, you do like I wonder what happened to these people. You know I'd, what I mean? I'd probably go up to him and be like, Hey, how's it going? Old Navy. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then punch him again. Mouth again. Yeah. <laughs> 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 this one ought to last you a lot longer. Pow. He's he's probably like become a bodybuilder because he was so embarrassed about what happened to him in fourth grade. But it's like every he's time an old just navy. Like, he's probably an, a macho man. Like he's probably an MMA fighter now. I just imagine he <laughs> and has he's like just searching for me. He has like shell shock every time he sees an old navy commercial. Now he's like, oh. he just has like. <laughs> <laughs> then he goes and works out some more. Yeah. Then he drinks some more muscle milk. <laughs> he's probably. <laughs> I, I imagine him, like wandering through the desert, just like trying to find me to enact his revenge. <laughs> He's got like a chainsaw in his hand, like instead of a hand. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like one hand's a chainsaw. Ash in the face. What? Did you punch Ash from The Living Dead in the face? I don't know. I, what you're I, about. I didn't. I don't think I did. <laughs> but like, if he has a chainsaw for a hand, maybe maybe that's exactly what happened. <laughs> It's the backstory. Yep. Everyone has their origin story. That's why he's so good at fighting demons. He was training to fight me, and then <laughs> he got kind of sidetracked with that whole thing. So basically, you're giving yourself credit for that. Yeah. So anybody likes those movies, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so, Andrew, it's your turn. Okay. So my question... What is your worst situation where you had to use the restroom but couldn't? <laughs> That's a good question because that was a really hard one for me because I've had um, a lot of those. <laughs> it was a hard one for me because I don't like keep track of those kind of things. Like I don't write about it in my journal. Like <laughs> oh, your diary. diary. <laughs> I couldn't go to the bathroom today. <laughs> it was terrible. <clears throat> um. Well, yeah, so I'm trying to think of which one. It's kind of difficult. I guess uh, they're not that funny because it's <laughs> like you have to poop. So so I was so all three of us, for those who don't know, this is like our coming out. We're all Mormons. So um, <laughs> I think we've mentioned it. Shh, the, they don't know yet. 
Oh, shh. Or that time that I talked about my mission wasn't a dead giveaway. <laughs> this, is your, this is your meet the Mormons. Um, but so this is while I was a missionary. So I was with another guy. And we were like uh, probably an hour and a half away from our apartment. And this was out in the country in Oklahoma. So basically it was this small town of maybe like, maybe like 200 people. Like the town was so old that like some of the houses didn't have air conditioning and it was in the summer. It's freaking miserable. That sounds horrible. Yeah. I feel like like the next detail about the story is that some of the houses also didn't have plumbing. Well, I don't know, because I didn't ask, because I, I don't, well, maybe some of them didn't, because I think I saw, like, some outhouses, but, um, it was in the middle of nowhere, and, um, we were really tired, and and we needed to go to the bathroom, um, but we didn't want (laughs) to, we didn't want to ask anybody at the, to use their house, because of the houses that we had been in so far, we didn't want to use the restrooms (laughs) that were going to be in those houses, like, or not in those houses. I mean, there was people who had, like, part of their living room was, was like, dedicated to this is where the dog poops. Like, this <laughs> this corner is for the dog poop. Well, at least they didn't just let him go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Were you afraid that they would just point to another corner? <laughs> <laughs> like, use our restroom, it's right over there. Don't, don't mind Fido, don't look him in the eye when you're trying to, trying to squat. <laughs> Or just look at the, the guests in the eye as you're trying to squat. Uh, okay, anyway. <laughs> on the, so on the on the outside of weird. town, on the outside of town, like there was a highway, and on the highway there was a gas station. So so we we decided to go to by the gas station to get maybe like something to drink, like a like a cold water or something. You know what I mean? So it was really it was like 106. Um, and so we we went to the gas station. And we were going to use the restroom because we both had to go. And so uh, m- my companion, he went in there and he, like, he just walked right out. <laughs> and he was like, and I was like, what? <laughs> and so I went in and it looked like, like a bomb had gone off in there. If the bomb was made completely out of feces. Uh, oh, uh, uh, Oh, uh, I feel like I feel like I'm mirroring our audience's reaction right now. <laughs> super, uh, super bad, I'm not dude. Here if I want the story to continue, <laughs> super bad. So we got in our car and we had planned to be there all day, right? Like we drove an hour and a half to this place. We're gonna be there, work there the whole day, then go back. But we were like, uh, uh-uh. uh, we gotta go home. <laughs> we got. <laughs> And we both really had to go. So we were both holding it. And, and there was like this, like, he w- he was like super anal about he wanted to drive. Like, he didn't want me to drive. And so he was like one of those people who's like a backseat driver. So I was like, hey, you drive. And you could tell, like, he had this internal struggle because he knew that if he was the driver, the moment we pulled into the driveway home, I was going to jump out and grab the bathroom but he also really wanted to drive and not let me drive because he didn't trust me so this struggle was going on and he drove and i was sitting there in the passenger seat just doing the thing where you like you just fold your arms and lean down and just like rock back and forth trying to like think of anything else but the severe pain that's happening in your One of colon. those times where you just like you're trying to like escape your body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. It was it was the worst like hour and a half drive ever. I'm just like my body's shaking. We're all like we both have this like cold sweat going on cuz we have to go so bad. And that's I mean I I will spare you the details of the rest of the story, but we made it home. Thank you. We made it home, and I got in first, and it was so loud that we the neighbors... We all know what happens next. <laughs> yeah, we I'm not going to tell you any details. Has. It was really loud that the neighbors asked what was going on. <laughs> There's like a gun went off. <laughs> 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 Anyhow. <laughs> I don't think anything needs to be added to that. It's a whole new meaning <laughs> to the term shotgun. 
That's it, though. <laughs> That's my story. My answer is, like, I, I can't, I, I honestly can't remember, like, a specific time that I've had, like, a terrible experience where I just had to go and I couldn't. Like, I can't help but thinking of those times where, like, you have to go and you can't get there fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> like, so just, like, basically whenever you're sick and you're just, like, you're about to throw up and you just, like, you start running towards the bathroom, like, as fast as you kind of, like running and by that i mean like shambling because you're sick <laughs> and like time seems to slow down and you just start you just start thinking about all these other things like am i going to make it not just to the bathroom but just in life in like, general you start, you start having this existential crisis of incontinence <laughs> <laughs> yeah that is the best like, like the worst and the, and the uh, thing is it seems like you can see the toilet for a lot longer than you can normally see it like it seems like whatever usually obstructs your view like it's there and you're like slowly moving towards it but it's taking like, you forever like tunnel vision of the toilet yeah like toilet tunnel vision man. <laughs> and then like then you then you're done and you're just like in that weird like state of delirium where you just like I don't know. It 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 must be what being what being on drugs is like because you just start <laughs> thinking about everything. You're just like, oh, yeah. wow. <laughs> like, does anything even matter? <laughs> and then you like, then like the next time it happens, like the cycle just repeats, and you start thinking like, if I if I accidentally throw up on my roommate's things, like how long before he notices that I've left forever? <laughs> <laughs> That's your solution. <laughs> Just to move. Every time you throw up on something, well, it's time to move. Then you starting to wonder, like, is is there a clause in the contract that lets me get out of it so that I can, like, like a throw up on your roommate's things? Me. <laughs> oh nice. man. And the funny well, thing about that is you come out of it and you think you've learned something. Like you think you've had this <laughs> you think you've had this epiphany and like that it, next it time feels things like you've be had different. A moment. Yeah. But next time it's the same thing. It feels like you've climbed a mountain to the guru. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, to keep this trend, um, my situation doesn't have to do with vomit or feces. <laughs> 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 but it does have to do with um, having to go pro uno? really bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pro uno. So this also happened on my mission because I think all the awkward situations I've had in my life are just like 95% of them have happened on my mission. That's a lot. No it makes sense. Like life. you're spending two years talking to strangers dressed in a uniform. Yeah. That's well, I look like the happen. mafia coming to people's doors. But anyway, so in this situation, I was, um, I was actually a zone leader and I was on exchanges with the Spanish elders. So I was a Spanish missionary. From Spain? From, not from Spain, but they spoke Spanish. <laughs> and they taught people that spoke Spanish. Oh, okay. And anyway, so we walked into this appointment, and this was their progressing investigator. It was near the end of the night. And I, we walked in, and I'm like, oh, man, I'm, I'm going to have to go to peace soon. Like, I, like, that was on my to-do list in my mind. Like, this is going to have to happen soon. <laughs> and, Bring the spirit, convert people, yeah. go to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, so that was, that was my, my list of things I had to get done. And I'm like, well, hey, this, this lesson will only last like 45 minutes, and then I'll take care of that. So I'm like, okay. Um, so we go in, and I don't know what it is about people from Latin America, but they love giving you Mountain Dew and drinks. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they give me like a cup like that large, like also, a big gulp <laughs> size thing. And I, and I drink it because you have to. And also, so if you're we're only there here. for 45 minutes, they're going to they're gonna think that you hate them. Yeah. So, <laughs> because I didn't know because I don't speak Spanish and teach people to speak Spanish. So, I was sitting there, um, and I don't speak Spanish, but they spoke Spanish. My companion at that time would speak Spanish, and the member that was with us would speak Spanish. So, I'm just sitting there, <laughs> just waiting patiently. <laughs> for nothing to distract day. you. <laughs> and so... And it comes to the point, I'm like, oh, man, I really have to go. Like, it was really bad. Like, the liquid is trying to find a way to come out of body. So I was just sweating, these giant amounts of sweat coming down. 
and I'm like mentally like thinking like what would happen if I just went? What if I just like <laughs> just peed right now? Like what was the worst that could happen? Like I'm just thinking about it. I'm like it's like so bad. And the problem is, is like it's like this is like I could look around and I could tell like this is an intense lesson, but I had no idea when an appropriate time would be to say, Hey, can I use your restroom? I don't know what they're talking about. I don't know what's going on. So I'm just sitting there waiting for some 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 hint that this this lesson is coming to an end, but it never came. And so I'm sitting there, and an hour passes, and I'm still sitting there, and I'm just like, I can't do this. I'm just praying to God with for all the strength, saying, hey, if I pee on their couch, they won't get baptized. So I just got to hold this. <laughs> and, <laughs> and eventually, after an hour and a half, I'm like, you know what? I got to do something. So I'm like, hey. Wrist and I just hurried off, and I must have been in there for like a half an hour. Like they must have thought I was, something was wrong because when I got back, they were done and ready to go. So, yeah, that was my experience. That's a really bad situation. <laughs> yeah, it was. That's why it's so like firm in my memory <laughs> because it was like I've never had to go more in my entire life than right then. Oh man. I would just like to take this time to welcome anybody who has stumbled upon this podcast <laughs> in philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> the philosophy section of iTunes. Um, welcome. I hope you've had a good time, and I'm guessing we'll never see you again. <laughs> oh, weeding out the herd. That's what we're doing. <laughs> we're, 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 Our herd is great to begin with. We're... we're we're <laughs> oh, uh, wheat, and, wheat and chaff, fellas. Wheat and chaff. Of course, I mean, I guess we could make the argument that this is philosophy. Like this is some. This is this is a a universal human experience. This is a natural philosophy. You know what I mean? Like no, it's 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 not like Kierkegaard or <laughs> Badu or this is a practical philosophy. Yeah. Actually, I have no idea whether or not Kierkegaard is practical. I haven't read any of them. That he's written. I read things he's written, but I don't remember them. Obviously, they weren't important. That's it. That's three guys, three questions. If this is your first time, that's what it is. So, have fun. It's not always about pooping. Yeah, but it's hey. pretty much always about Taylor Swift. <laughs> Pardon. <laughs> so tell, tell, fellas, tell them where they can find you at. Oh, I'll go first. I am A underscore S-A-V at the Twitters. And I am at that Adam kid on Twitter, and I'm lonely. So, so lonely. Um, I am so lonely. I'm at Aaron L.M. Goodwin on Twitter and probably everywhere. So if there is a social networking and or internet web app thing, I'm on there. Hey, people add it's me on... Hello, apparently. I'm on yeah, Hello, apparently. Know. If you're on Tiny, add me on there. It's a cool thing, but I don't know that many people on there. T -I, I don't even know what it is. So. T-I-I-N-Y. I don't know if it's on the the Android, but it's on, it's on Apple. Um, all right. That's it. And next week... Oh, there's not going to be an episode next week. We have a bye no. week. So <laughs> what you should do on that week, instead of giving up entirely on the show and forgetting about us, is you'll go back and listen to the old ones. Or send us fan mail, or follow me on Twitter, or ask yeah. us a question. And ask us what a I'm... question. So like one of the – my question was from someone who submitted a question on our website. You just go to 3g3q.co slash ask, mm -hmm. and you can watch us live. You go to 3g3q.co slash live and just go to our website, 3g3q.co. I said it right three times in a row. So basically the lesson we learned is that if you don't want us talking about bathroom experiences, you should ask us lots of questions. No, nope, that's all of them. I don't have any other ones. I could, I could try to make me one. But... No. <laughs> no.